Today's episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Sony. Go to revision3.com slash Sony for an inside look at the latest Sony gear and games. And Squarespace. Today on Film Riot, we're going to explain a few of the effects we did from our Christmas episode and cover the gear I use on Film Riot and the extras I will be using for my short film, Tell. Fun. Welcome to Film Riot, that show that takes some mystery out of the effects and techniques to go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Connolly. So, if you didn't see it last week, we released a Christmas special which was all sketch comedy and no tutorial. It was also filled with visual effects, which you can see by going here if you haven't seen it already. I got to get me one of those! And not surprisingly, we have been flooded with questions on how we did some of this stuff. So, I'm going to answer two of the most popular. Let's roll. The first one we're going to talk about is not an effect at all, but a shot that had a few people confuddled nonetheless. Not a word. What, confuddled? Yeah, not a real word. It sure is. Oh yeah? What does it mean? It means to be confuddled. Jimmy. Happy holidays. This one shot was the most requested tutorial out of our entire Christmas special and was extremely easy to pull off because we had the proper gear for it, which was a small jib. Now there are a ton of different models out there, but my favorite and the one I use for this shot is the Kessler Crane pocket jib. So I set my jib up, then using Kessler's Hercules head, I adjusted the ball mount forward and then tilted the head down for a straight down shot. Now I was initially going to throw the whole setup on a dolly system, but we were short one crew member that night, so that meant I would have to run camera and then step in as the final gunman in the end. So instead, I went with a circular movement by just rotating the jib arm. And there you have it, super simple. Now I do recommend getting a pro jib like the Kessler Crane pocket jib, but if you don't have the cash for that just yet, you could always start out by making your own. And you can find out how to do that in an old episode of ours. This one. Bejadart. Okay, moving on. Joshua, do your worst. So we have three parts here. First is the slow-mo, then the separation from me in the background so that we can put the flames behind me, and finally the flames themselves. Now I'm not going to show you how we did the flames because we have covered something similar in a past episode that you can look at right here, but basically it's just a few digital assets placed in and color corrected to match. The main problem with this shot is that we had to rotoscope me out, which is masking frame by frame so that it would appear the flames were behind me. Now I know I had a reason to mask instead of using a green screen, but now for the life of me I can't really remember what that was, and if I had to go back and do it again, I I would definitely just use a green screen, but we were on a tight deadline and didn't have time or Joshua to reshoot. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, well, it's Why would we want to reshoot, you ask? Well, as we brought the footage into After Effects and started rotoscoping, we found that it was extremely hard and time consuming to mask perfectly, even while using the auto trace feature. And again, since we were on such a tight deadline, we couldn't spend the time to make it perfect. So Stark came up with a great workaround. In the beginning, when the mask was the worst, we added a heavy lens flare. That way we were able to cover up the mask for the majority portion of it and just focus on a smaller amount of time. This also helped us bring in the fire assets much easier since it was all blown out by the lens flare. Mm -hmm. Asset. Stop it. The point of all this is that using a bit of creativity can get you around a lot of time and budget constraints that you might come across in your production. So when you hit a wall like a mask not working properly, don't panic. Think outside the box and you are sure to come up with a workaround to bail you out of that jam. Peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Oh no! I'm still got the revolver. I still got the revolver. No, 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 no. I shouldn't have done that. Damn! Go! Oh, I want you. No! Bad start. Bad start. Bad start! Come on! Come on! No! Come on, man! Dang it! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, mother! You're. 
<laughs> Bruno, compose yourself. This is just a game. This is just a game, Bruno. This is just a game. This is just a game. Mother effer. Your mother is a whore. Oh my gosh! No! <laughs> What the f***? What the f***? What the f***? I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna eat you for breakfast. That's a promise. Today we're sponsored by Sony. Our friend Anthony Carboni has worked with them to put together a segment for our show. Check out this segment and then go to revision3.com slash Sony to watch the full segment and join in on the discussion. Hey everyone, I'm Melody. And I'm Anthony, and we're here because Sony wants to give you something better than your basic commercial. That's why we're taking a closer look at the pioneer of portable music players, the Walkman. That's right. Even though the good old cassette Walkman was retired earlier this year, the product line is still going strong and still innovating. And we're going to take you on a trip down memory lane to see just how much our little friend has transformed over the years. To check out our full history of the Walkman and get a look at some of the latest models, just head to revision3.com slash Sony. Hey player, why are you so down? Because I'm afraid of clowns. Not playing nah. Logo. I've been getting this question for a while now, but for some reason lately, the number of people asking it has increased quite a bit. Ryan, I think it would be great if you would show us all your gear on the show. That's all, Steven. Well, Mr. Seagal, since we just finished gathering all the gear I'll be using to make my short film tell, I figured now would be a good time to murder two birds with one shotgun. Show you the gear I use on a regular basis, and then the little extras I'll be using for my short film. So let's take a lovely trip down the checklist o gear that I use for film right, plus the extras I'll be using for tell. And we will start with my grip gear. So first of all, I have my gig bag, which is basically just a duffel bag with a bunch of must-haves inside, like gaff tape, which is like duct tape, but doesn't leave a mark and sticks to freaking everything. Safety cables, which are for securing lights or other objects that are hung high as precaution. Extension cords, extra rope, wire, and C47s, which are actually just clothespins. But in the film industry, we call them C47s. Don't ask why, nobody really knows. But you'd use these C47s to clip your gels to barn doors or your lights. Outside of the gig bag, I have some sandbags, which are mainly used to weigh down light stands and C stands so that they don't tip over and break your gear or someone's face. Black wrap, which is like black tin foil, you use this to wrap around your lights to prevent light spill. It's super flexible and can be used for a lot of other things on set as well. And the other thing I always have with me is my Leatherman, which is like a Swiss army knife for grown-ups. It's like a tiny toolkit in your pocket. Every low budget filmmaker should have one with them on every production. It is an unbelievably useful tool. And that's my short list of grip gear I use on a regular basis for film right. Now for tell, I will be using a few extra things like some C-stands, which are heavy duty stands that can hold flags, lights, or whatever else you need floated. It's a super flexible tool that can hold pretty much anything in almost any position you'd need. I'll also be using some apple boxes, and these are nothing more than wooden boxes of different sizes. Now they don't seem like something you would need, but once you get on set, you'd be surprised at how many uses you will get out of them. From making an actor taller to propping up a piece of the set, these babies definitely come in handy. And finally, I'll be using a lot of rigging gear, mostly for lighting, like scissor clamps, gaffer grip clamps, cardellini clamps, and pony clamps. All of which I will mostly use for rigging lights where a light stand isn't possible. The lights that I use on a regular basis for Film Riot are three 1K PAR lights, which are 1000 watt lights, two 500 watt PAR lights, one 250 watt Pro light, a 500 watt softbox, a few can lights from Home Depot, and two ceiling fluorescent lights that I threw some whips on. Then I have a bunch of gels like CTO, which stands for color temperature orange, CTB, which stands for color temperature blue, different densities of diffusion, and a few NDs, which stand for neutral density. Lastly, in my lighting toolbox, I have my reflectors. These are five by sevens, which you can get from Digital Juice and are a must when shooting outside. Again, for tell, I will be getting a few extras like a 1000 watt softbox and two Kino flows. For my main portable tripod, I use the Manfrotto 504 HD Fluid Head Tripod. It's a mid-price tripod and it works great. In my dolly corner, I have the Kessler K-Flex Dolly System, which is their K-Pod and K-Flex track combined to make some dolly moving delight. I don't use this setup much for film ride due to our short deadlines. We typically don't have the extra time it takes to set this bad boy up and move it around for different shots, which is where the sliders come in. I have both the Kessler Cine Slider and Pocket Dolly. These are basically platforms that you can mount your camera to, then slide left and right for short dolly moves. 
you can set these up on countertops, the floor, or your tripod to move around as you shoot. The Cine Slider was the device I used for all the dolly moves in the Christmas episode, except for one. This is got real! That was the K-Flex system. Now my jib, as I showed you before, is the Kessler Pocket Jib, and yes, I do have a love affair with Kessler products. For Tell, the only extra I'll be getting in this category is a glide cam system, which I will be borrowing from a friend. Gotta love calling in them favors. Through the course of Film Riot, we have used a bunch of different cameras like the Canon XL-H1, the Canon HV40, the Sony EX3, and now my current camera, which we've been using for the past few months, the Canon 5D, which I have talked about at length in a ton of episodes, like that one, so go look. Now while in pre-production, I had to put a lot of thought into what camera I wanted to use for Tell, since each camera has its own look. I finally came to the decision that I wanted to go with the Canon XL-H1 using the Lettuce Extreme lens adapter for shallow depth of field. Now the reason I went with this camera above the others is I really wanted to try to get a sort of 16mm film look with Tell, and from all my testing, the Canon XL-H1 was the camera that gave me that look the best. Also, by going with this camera above a DSLR like the 5D, I won't have to worry about rolling shutter or heavy aliasing and I will have proper time code for our VTR sheets to help with caption logging later on, but we'll get to all that in later episodes. You can do this, mother No, you Wow, really? 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 You're gonna do that? Bruno? Bruno, you're better than that, Bruno! I just focus, just focus. Just, just focus, just focus. No, you shit me! No! Oh my gosh! Somebody already has the launcher. Oh my, really? You're not gonna die? You're not gonna die? Yeah, where are you going? Where are you going with that? Where are you going? Nowhere, that's where. I'm gonna have it! Come on, no! No! Don't get shanked like an idiot. No! Squarespace offers users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, or any kind of website. No matter what level of coding experience you have, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create a high-end, complex website that is uniquely your own. Don't worry if you come across any questions or issues, Squarespace also offers every user 24-7 support. Squarespace just pushed a brand new social widget from Geolocation Services. Display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare and Facebook Places on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in solution for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with the Squarespace style editor. Squarespace's iPhone app lets you publish your blog on the go and comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve new comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments, and more, all from your iPhone. Many of the internet's highest traffic web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities. Go to www.squarespace.com to learn more. Be sure to enter the code FILMRIOT when checking out to earn 10% off the lifetime of your order. And that's it for today. But until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Ryan underscore Conley. You can also follow the Film Riot Twitter and our Facebook page. And if you don't follow any of those right now, then you probably haven't heard that my production company, Train Films, is making some filmmaker t-shirts. And you can help decide which designs we actually use. To find out more about that, go to our Train Films Facebook so that you can see the designs and make sure to like our page so that you can vote on the two designs that you would like to see us actually make. And finally, check out our YouTube page and subscribe there if you would like. Dang, we're all over the internets. Yes, we're spread across the interwebs like butter on bread or lotion on a fat man's thighs. Yeah. Well, I'll see you next week when I fight to get back the Ark of the Covenant after it falls in the hands of the Nazis. What was that squeaking noise? It was my kitten, because it pop, pop, Wingspan, wingspan, pop. Dude, dog, dog, dude, dog, son, dude, dude. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna like pretend I'm not gonna read with that. I know your name. I know your name. Get in my blood. Hot tar lights. One, two, fifty. Something's in my eyeball. It has invaded and it is trying to take over my iris. My pupil is fighting as hard as it can, but it can only hold the walls up for so long, man. You are a strange individual. I'm taking a break from being awesome.